I think that defending women's rights is a very dangerous job. I think that the Global Fund for Women understands, first, that it's very important to defend the rights of women, and second, that it is dangerous. So their support is very important for the whole community of women's rights defenders. And I had traveled to different countries around the globe, studying the role of courts in abortion and reproductive rights. And I realized that Colombia was one of the very few countries in the world that had a complete ban on abortion, not even to save the life of the pregnant woman. I thought that I had to do something about it. The Global Fund for Women was one of the funders that believed in me and they gave me one of the first grants to start doing the research that eventually would lead to me challenging the law in Colombia. I just like difficult challenges too. <laughs> what is the most difficult thing you can think of? Well, abortion. Nobody likes to talk about it, but women and girls are dying every day around the globe because of it. It was a very difficult political and cultural question. In 2006, the Constitutional Court of Colombia recognized abortion as a right of women and girls. We just all went ecstatic. We had no idea it was going to have such an incredible impact in the country, but we knew what it meant to us. At one time, the law was seen as oppressive. Nowadays, it's the tool that can help us in our struggle to find equality and justice. Everything that has happened, the war for each of us, to me, has left the deepest marks and changed my life. We organized ourselves because we had the strongest ethical and moral imperative to do so. And it was up to us to publicly, clearly, and loudly show the government and society that we do not consent for one minute for one second with that which they did in the 90s. And we will never comply with the denial of war crimes carried out in our names. What is really important is that women who were not feminists or activists before the war created a solidarity network that because of their collective work led them to become activists who took their deepest disagreement with the politics of the war and transformed it into collective actions. We have created this new kind of power, the power of solidarity, the power of trust, the power of disobedience, and a complete community of free-thinking individuals who fight for autonomy and believe that it is extremely important. Nazra has a program for women's human rights defenders. For us, every woman who is active in the public space and is trying to express themselves openly as a woman is a human rights defender. So we are including young female protesters, doctors, nurses, women from the labor movement. In the last four months, we had sexual assaults and gang rapes in the streets. We had women who had been raped in the streets while they were protesting. We were trying to work with the groups who were there on the ground trying to save women. 
We tried to support those women medically, legally, psychologically. We also gave them advice on how to deal with rape cases. Even if we are living in a revolution, people are human and they have the right to express themselves and to live a sustainable life. I believe in solidarity and I believe that without the experience of different women struggling in different countries around this world, we will be losing a lot. So I think that any feminist movement is a global movement. Seeing women in different places, in the West, in Sub-Saharan Africa, in Eastern European countries, in Latin America, we see that we are not alone. There is a problem in all of our societies. I think Nasra owes Global Fund for Women a lot. They were our very first partners when we established our organization. They gave us our core funding and they really supported us. So thank you.